happening, good people? Howdy. Are you Jimmy? I'm Jimmy. Are you Doug Kirsten's kid? <laughs> oh, yeah. What's happening, What's good up, people? <laughs> In the Thursday Night Live world Live. of fly time and all things dying. And like the comment I heard earlier, one of these flies tonight is going to go to the train station. Oh, yes. But which and one? if you guys think <laughs> Tim sounds much better tonight, give us two thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. And if we could drink Coors on the show, we would. But the next best thing and over there? looks very similar. Oh, Chris Pills. Chris Pills. Just finishing yeah. off the last of the beers from Mr. Brent Struthers. Yeah. So Those are good ones. Welcome, folks. This is not how we always dress. Just on Thursdays. Just on Thursdays. And once a year when we do the <laughs> Yellowstone night. So feel free to let us know where you're from, what you're drinking. And if mm-hmm. you just tuned in for the first time ever... You're here for a special reason tonight, so don't check out quite yet because we've got quite the show in store yes, for you do. guys tonight. <laughs> when you had your other mic on, we got to hear more of the music. Yeah, that's true. It's now, a, now I'm more directional. Now you're more tight. Your mouth tight. Taut. Tight. Tight. All right, folks. <laughs> what we need to do is head over here and check out. What do we got going the on? Comments. Who's here? See what's happening. Let's catch everybody up. What's up, Matthew York? My tie room looks like a polar <laughs> iced up bomb exploded. Well, that's yep, what that, ours that also yep. looks like. So feel free to say hi, where you're from, and most importantly, what you're drinking, what you're dressed up like, oh, what you're dressed up you. like, folks. Because tonight, there's a few ways to win. You can win on bingo. You can also win. On uh, there's going to be a special prize for somebody at tracks. Mm-hmm. There's also going to be Brandy missed something. Huh? Well, attention to detail because <laughs> everything about tonight said Yellowstone night, so you were yes. supposed to dress up. And the best prize of the night will go to someone who dressed up but popping the boat. <sighs> yeah. So what do we do here on Thursday Night Live <laughs> besides <laughs> dressing up? Once in a that's while. About, that's about sums it up right there. I wow. just want to grab the really cool prize that oh, someone's yeah. going to win for the, you go ahead and do that. the best uh, the best thing here. And uh. <laughs> All right, Thursday Night Live. What is it? Well, let me tell you. We get together once a week. We tie a couple of flies. Uh, we do a lot of BSing. We have a lot of a time with a community that's really come together on an online presence during our current times where we can't exactly be around each other as much as we'd like to. Um, and so, yeah, we come together, we tie a couple flies, we uh, instruct you through that. We also do a lot of fun stuff here. we got some great sponsors that uh, donate a lot of giveaways. So we do uh, um, bingo during the middle of the show where you get the opportunity to win some prizes. Um, we do a lot, of, a lot of pretty unique things, which you're just going to have to stay tuned to see. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's a, it's a great community. And if, you, if you're not already been part of it, you're new, um, I encourage you to go over to the comment section because that is where the fun is at. Although we do kind of direct and lead a little bit what's happening here the comments is where all the fun is and uh yeah That's make right. sure you make sure you do comment because it's it's ironic we encountered this a bit last year where people were like there's no lie was awesome we were like loved watching it all season it's like we didn't have no idea you were there yeah let us so know let you're us here know. Definitely. Because we want to know. And if I had one more button on this shirt I would undo <laughs> it. So <laughs> yes you would what's uh, the buttons don't stop on the shirt. Yeah. Well what's cool about tonight folks <clears throat> we went all in. Oh, no. we talking Nota. about we? Jimmy, we'll have to wait till Cedar later, maybe. Is <laughs> Jen Lyle here? Because I'll tell you what, <sighs> there may Jen be some money Lyle here. I don't know. We'll, is going to we'll get she's everything, gonna, everything ahead. she desired tonight, <laughs> she's and more. Definitely more. So let's hope Jen's in the house. So David Sawyer, what's happening? Terry is hey, Terry. Uh, Montana here with the Coors. Scott's nice. in Detroit drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brandy's still trying to catch up on what, <laughs> what is, is this. What's so going on? I don't what I wanted to show you guys quickly here was um, from our friend, Mr. Blake Teague. Yeah. Is, uh, well, the best. Pretty awesome giveaway. The best dressed Yellowstone costume tonight is going to win this incredible Bluetooth speaker, a Bose Soundlink Color 2. Oof. 
And that's from Mr. Blake Teague. So, guys, feel free to reach out to him. But so, anyways, that's going to be the prize for the best dressed. How you win is you have to email a photo. Uh, some people have been sending them through text. It just, I want to keep them all in one spot. So, TNL at flyfishingbowriver.com. Email me your pictures. We're going to go through them. We're going to try to put some of them up here so everybody can see kind of at what we call the halftime show. And uh, then we're going to pick a winner. Yeah. And you're going to get this incredible Bose Sound Link Color 2 Bluetooth speaker from uh, Mr. Blake Teague. That's Amazing. just what the good people here do is they just uh, make it even a better place to hang out. Yeah. Like that's just somebody who watches the show, guys, who has donated stuff to give away to you guys yeah. as well. So that's pretty epic. All right, Ray's from Bradford, Pennsylvania, drinking nice. Miller Light. Scott Miller Williams, Light. what's up, in Scott? the house? You can watch, you can uh, watch on YouTube. You can watch on Facebook. It's yeah. also streaming on the Twitter. Uh, probably, if it comes to prizes, YouTube is uh, quicker. But Facebook is cooler because <laughs> it just is. I mean, YouTube's cool. If everyone switched to YouTube, I'd be okay with that. But yeah. it's because every people, all people the people, Facebook. all the good people, all the good people. Uh, Sven Diesel is just he. Can I win because I'm basically as cool? <laughs> Pretty. You can almost win. Juanita's drinking nude, oh. dressed up. Wait, drinking nude. You're drinking oh. nude and dress and no, oh, she's just drinking oh, nudes. nudes. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Corey. I thought he had a pretty good night I, going on there. Well, he probably does. Data looks ready to fish the highwood out west. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm chasing my cows back through the uh, highwood <laughs> here. So, yeah, if oh, you're man. if you're local, guys, head down to Tracks Pub. Yeah. Because uh, there's some people down there. And Fabi Malaki is here with some verfayi spam. Yeah. Lots going on. Can I win for being the Sven on the You Yes, yeah, you win. <laughs> Nobody try anymore. Sven wins by default. Oh, man. Uh, anyways, yeah, so what are we going to do? We're going to tie some flies I'm all over the map here because <laughs> guess what? This it's map is not here. a map. No. We don't know where we're going. It's quickly land. Glenn's back home in the COVID cave. Where's Beth at? Well, folks, we are still <sighs> waiting to see where Beth is. And uh, John Miller from Michigan, <laughs> Kalamazoo. You represent anyone representing Kalamazoo? Uh, Tim really does look <laughs> like Jimmy. <laughs> it kind of dawned on us after the show last year. Like, no, that's I'm like, easy. you're not Timmy, Beth. Timmy, you're not Timmy. Beth Timmy. as much no, as you no, want to be Beth. I don't. I really um, don't. Also, what you can do is download a bingo card. Flyfishingbowriver.com slash Thursday Night Live. And... Uh, got yourself a bingo card nice. and then you can win what let me show you tim why don't you tell him which fly we're gonna tie first sure thing so if jim's not here tonight but if he was here <laughs> he, would he could start threading his <laughs> bobbin yes well folks what we're gonna start off with tonight we got two flies so first off we'll talk about them um we have the simple scud real good essential fly want to have a few of these in your box the simple scud we're gonna go through that one it's a pretty quick fly that one won't take long we have a little bit more of a complicated one, but still quite simple. This is the stone flopper. Stone flopper, called that because it's half stone fly, half hopper. All right, stone flopper. So those are the two flies we're gonna be tying tonight. We're gonna start off with that simple scud. Um, and so for thread, I'm gonna be using a, um, a six odd or eight odd in olive color. Um, and then for our second fly, I'm gonna use a little bit beefier thread because we're working with foam. And I'll use, uh, you know, definitely a six odd, possibly a three odd, and that's gonna be in tan or brown. So if you're looking to get your threads ready, that's what you're gonna need. Yeah. So what's important here, guys? What helps? Uh, what helps make the show a little cooler, besides Jimmy over here, <laughs> is uh, Tim has a ride home tonight. Oh, Actually, don't... we can say sleepover now. Yeah, we can. We used to have to. Yeah, we used to have to technically call it a ride home. Yeah. So now Tim's got a sleepover here tonight. <laughs> so um, if we hit 150 shares on this video on Facebook, Tim chugs a beer. And then uh, I feel Jim bad, so I uh, chug to, a beer with him. With me. And then the other thing that really likes, the really, the really, see? I was like way ahead of the game. <laughs> the other thing that's really cool is if you, if you like or love this post, uh, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, just give a little love. It kind of tells the old Facebook, Mr. L, 
algorithm at Facebook algorithm. that you're having a good time here with us. And um, you never know. We get more people. Things just get a little crazier in here. And uh, But so, yeah, the bingo. The bingo tonight. So we've got a sticker pack, um, a, a mixture of stuff from us here at Fly Fish and Barber Outfitters. Uh, our friends at Fish Pond have thrown in some really cool stickers here. And then uh, we got some stickers from our friends over at Watermaster because it is the Watermaster Fly Ingo that we will be playing. Mm-hmm. A couple stickers there, some more from Fish Pond. <laughs> uh, one of our other sponsors, Norvice. That's some stickers cool. from them. And then the friends at Norvice are also known as O'Neill's Fly Fishing. Some stickers there. And then from shore, we got a hundred dollars in uh, tying material that they've packaged, just like every week. So there's a whole bunch of variety of things in there, from tinsels to tensils to yarns to material <laughs> to feathers and leathers. to feathers and leathers. <laughs> and then um, one of our viewers, Mr. Michael Stone, he donated these this week um, from. Is it Anadromonus? Andromonus. Andromonus, Anadromus, whatever. Um, so really cool tools. So there's a couple scissors in different sizes. Okay. There's a arrow point scissors. And then there's these uh, four and a half inch spring scissors. So these are all yeah. going to go in with this stuff. And then there's more because everybody in the parties attracts pubs tonight. <laughs> Anybody who's cool. We got a shirt. From yeah. anybody, if I can pull this up, <clears throat> Tracks Pub support your local music venue. Okay, our friends at Track Pub got a shirt. Yes. And then also from our friends at Shore Fishing, there's a shirt. So you got a couple shirts, a bunch of stickers, some materials, and some tools. That is quite. And that is way. for the bingo folks. Nice. So, um, but yeah, and then there's the Bose SoundLink. Uh, Bluetooth speaker for the best dressed Yellowstone person tonight and just email your pictures what did I say? TNL <laughs> yeah. at flyfishingbover.com <laughs> and then I can kind of look through them when, when Tim's tying the flies there so yeah if you've also been uh, branded then good for you because I am also branded and uh, maybe I didn't introduce myself, but I'm Dana Lattery outside <laughs> of this, and that's Timothy uh, Hepworth. So Timmy Hepworth. He ties flies. I tell some lies. And, and we, uh, we have a good time. Try to make things fun. So, yeah, we're <laughs> going to tie two patterns tonight. Uh, what I do want to do is go through commercials, and I kind of want to explain something really cool for you guys with the quick ties that we got. Yeah. Because if you're here and you're like, hurry up, tie flies. Yeah, we got something cool for you. So what we're going to do quickly is just head over to the uh, thanks to our sponsors. And we'll be right back in about one second. About 60. 60. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, All right, so that's their sponsors. That's how that goes, folks. That but okay, so let's do something like this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go over here, and I want to see if we can do something like hit this screen. Okay. Here's what's really cool. Okay, because a lot of people are here, and they're like, "Hey, just hurry up, tie the flies." That's fine. That's great. We're gonna tie flies here. But what we need to understand that for everybody who just maybe tonight you bought the kit. You uh, show them the kit, by the yeah, way. Yeah. You can buy one of these kits. You get a uh, 
for, it's like so for tonight you'd open up your package you would get both the patterns fully tied and then you would get enough material to tie those patterns roughly twice okay and so that's what we're going to be tying out of tonight is those packages but if if say like uh we get going too fast and obviously you can't pause the live feed so the pros of the live feed is we have something we call sos and what you need to do is yell out sos and then we just pause where right we're at. I, I watch the comments. I say, Tim, pause. He pauses and we kind of answer questions. And if we do something that you don't understand on a live feed is when you ask the questions mm -hmm. that help you guys learn what you're doing. Because I know there's a lot of knocks about watching videos for learning to tie flies um, versus in-person uh, instruction. And that's great. That is great. That is really, really good. Uh, but here, you have the ability to watch live, ask questions, SOS. The people in the comments, they will help you out all day long. Make friends, add people here on Facebook, find them on Instagram. They will help you out 100%. But if something gets going a little quick tonight or you get having a little too much fun and a few too many drinks and you're like, I can't keep up, well, you just hold tight because you can go over to our website, flyfishingbober.com slash TNLS4. Okay, everything's here. So you, you click on something like this and you're going to be taken right to the live stream um, that we did on episode one. And then you want to learn to tie the Silent Bob. Well, you click on Silent Bob and that takes you over to YouTube. And then right there, Tim's going to do a quick tie and I'll just kind of scrub through this. And he's just going to walk you through without any of the BS on how to tie <laughs> that BS. fly and so that goes for all of these click on this the sbr sulfur nymph it's going to take you to youtube it's going to give you the quick tie you can learn to tie just along with that so if tonight you just want to hang out and drink some beer and have some fun you can do that if you want to tie along then tie along but yeah so just make sure you guys use the website as a resource because all the materials are there so if you didn't buy a kit all the materials are there they're up for the coming weeks you can click on these and find the live feed. You can click on these things here and find the quick ties. Um, tonight, at right after the show, the quick ties for this episode will be posted. So really try to use that stuff as a resource for you guys um, in kind of whatever facet you like to tie flies. Yeah, absolutely. And so we can sometimes get carried away with having fun. <laughs> but let's not, uh, yeah. So no, it's great. It's a great way to go back. Even if you did tie with us and you want yeah. to do it again, go back and go do back it again. To the, to the got version. more material. Yeah. And then you can he head over to rockymountainflyshop.net and they've got all the materials set up there so you can buy the materials for those flies. Mm -hmm. um, re really trying to make this uh, a really simple thing. The other thing we highly encourage is like take the material list that's on our website, go to your local fly shop, wherever you live, and go in there and, and, and support them. You know, we're here to help kind of get you guys fired up for fly tying. And uh, and then at that, what we're going to do is just have a little fun, tie some flies, and then head into your fly shop. Um, go buy your materials mm -hmm. or whatever. Whatever. So, all right. Are we missing anything? Quick ties are great for those on the East Coast. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. what happens is sometimes uh, we're a little behind. We have a little too much fun. And then Scott can wake up the next day and tie his flies because he doesn't have to hang out here. But <laughs> but you hang out long uh, enough and you win some great prizes. So That is true. Well, That's another good reason to stick around. We're debating we might show a film, a short film, halfway through. Yeah. Um, See how time's going. And then... Uh, He's a bear. <laughs> B8, did I feed the bears? Uh, Oh uh, man, Trevor, I, I <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, I'm getting All right, I'm getting well. some love from the other folks in town yeah. here, so I'm I'm happy. But uh, yeah. well, without much further ado, Tim, <laughs> we're gonna. Comments are so good. I know. I'm here for oh, the comments. Look like a meth head hanging around a truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, thanks, Blake, you dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beer fun exploding flies is what I'm here for. <laughs> so, if, yeah, that's right. Cody, <laughs> one contestant for the Yellowstone costume contest so far attracts Bub. Awesome. That's Cody dressed up as Beth. Beth. 
Murray, after two beers already, there's no way I'm going to try anything with a hook. Well, <laughs> that's what we got the quick, quick ties, ties for, Murray. For you. And you hang out tonight and just win some prizes and yeah. have some fun with us. <laughs> and yes, we will tie the scud first, right? Yep. Scud yeah, first. Definitely, yep. Scud. So your son you can tie with us. Um, pink star hat. Well, <laughs> that's a good question. We had uh, troubles looking yeah. for. Things are not easy to find, yeah. believe it or not. That's fact. This this hat's from Lamley's, <laughs> and this jacket's from the thrift store, and yeah, this is and that's from this uh, is from Mrs. <laughs> from the Mrs. Yeah, I still think smells like burning I think it's flesh. A J over there. <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. That's actually, the first time I saw it. Yeah, yeah, so she didn't do bad. All right, so enough with my chest. <laughs> uh, Devin my. Heimers <laughs> at Tracks, love the show. Well, awesome, we love Devin. you, Devin, and everyone at Tracks. Yeah, uh, we're gonna patch you guys in. Through Cole Fitzsimmons, who's there with some giveaways oh, yeah, for the people right, at yeah. track. So this scud doesn't take long. It's a very simple tie. Uh, but having said that, you're yeah. gonna need to know how to do it to do it. To do it. To do it. To do it. <clears throat> um, yeah, you will. One one shout out I want to give. I saw right at the very start um, a comment from Shay Markin, who is new to oh, us yeah. tonight. So welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy it. Um, just kind of starting out her fly tying career, so let's, uh, yeah. Wonderful. This is the place for new, old, young, and old. That didn't and all work. In between. I'll work. I'll it work on that. Yeah. Working new, quotes. new, less new, young, not so young, <laughs> and Jim. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Jim. Jim's actually oh, he's man. in Canmore this weekend. He's yeah. got a comedy show. Really? Like he's doing the comedy? Yeah, apparently he was trying all his jokes on oh. me the other day, so... Were well, any of them funny? Well, I told them they were. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give him some confidence for a show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. What okay. Do you mean? All well, right. folks, we got to get back to tying some flies here. <laughs> yes, so. let's do it. So, like Dana said, we are going to start off with our simple scud. So, once again... Swing, this... swing your sweet <clears throat> chariot. Oh, yeah, sorry. We're losing that, losing that mic, moving on to this one. Just to get it out of the way while we're tying, so it's not in the way, but this is going to be the fly oh, we're tying Oh, it just sounds for. so much worse. I know. That's the hard part, going between the two. So we got our simple scud. <clears throat> where, where did you put your mic? It's probably hiding. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I got to lose this jacket. Yeah, That's you should. It. Let's lose it. Let's <laughs> lose it. Is that when you used to work at Chevron? Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah. Then I donated it to the thrift store and went back and bought it. Yeah. All right, folks, now we're talking. Okay, so we are going to tie the simple scud. So if you go into your um, your season four kit, which Dana did mention, um, we do still have some of these for sale, limited quantities, but if you head over to um, www.thursday, oh, Thursday, www.flyfishingboardriver.com backslash TNLS4, you can pick up your kit today. Now we're gonna go in there, and we are gonna grab out our season four, episode four, and we are going to tie out of this tonight. So if you if you don't have one of these kits, this is what it looks like in the back. Okay, we got two different um, packages in there. So you got one with foam close to my finger, and the other one is a scud with uh, the dubbing in the back. So go ahead and grab that dubbing one out. And as always, guys, be careful because in your in the individual plastic bags, there are flat or sorry, there are you know little pieces. There's some wire in there. There's some hooks in there that may want to make their way to a different place. So uh, just be careful when you're opening them up onto your table. But we're gonna go ahead and go in there and grab um, grab the hook to start with. Not a ton of materials in this fly, but I think you're gonna really enjoy it. It's uh, There's some techniques to it, and you can, at first, you know, it kind of feels like the fly doesn't look like much, um, and then when you finish it off, it really finishes nice and looks exactly like a scud. And if you don't know what a scud is, scud is basically, a, we call it a freshwater shrimp. If you've ever been out ice fishing on a, a slough-type lake of some kind, and you bring your auger up, probably a ton of these came up on the ice with it. Um, in the lakes that we have around here that have trout in them, they are a main food source. Um, so really good to keep some of these in your box. So let's go ahead and grab that hook. So this is going to be a size 14. And they call this a few different things. Some people call this a caddis larva hook um, or a scud hook specifically. Um, but you just need a nice curve, okay? We want to have a curve on this fly. And we are going to tie quite deep into the bend. So I like to adjust, um, adjust my hook into that jaw so that I can do it. If you're curious as to what jaws I'm using tonight, because I am still tying on the Norvice, these are the shank jaws. Shank jaws. And in my opinion, they are the best jaws they make. Shank I like jaws. them all around for just about everything. Shaft. Shaft. I remember that. You, did you ever look it up? What's that? What's not? Shaft. Oh, no, I never, never looked it up. Oh, yeah. I never looked it up. 
Oh, Are you I'm Jimmy? Terrible. Are you Jimmy? <clears throat> I'm Jimmy. Okay, so we're gonna go in here to our dubbing. So this is like, um, you can use lots of different dubbings. This one is a more of an Antron style dubbing. Um, Possum is a good one for whatever reason. That's quite popular with Scuds as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a decent little chunk out of there, kind of like something like that. What I'm actually gonna do with this is I'm gonna roll it in my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna roll it so it kind of ropes up a little bit. It looks kind of like that, all right? Now what I'm gonna do with my scissors, I'm gonna go in there and I'm actually gonna cut that off. Okay, so that's kind of flat. Now I'm gonna go over and grab my thread. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna use some olive UTC or um, a uni thread. This would be a six odd or a 70 denier. I'm gonna start my thread just behind the eye. You get really good at holding materials and holding thread and doing all those things at the same time. Um, especially when you get tying a bunch of these. <clears throat> so I'm gonna trim that out. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in, because what we're gonna make here out of this is our antenna, our antenna for this fly. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm going to do a gathering wrap. Didn't quite get it that time. Do a little bit of a counterclockwise spin, a clockwise spin, my bobbin. Now I'm gonna start taking some thread wraps back over top of it. So you can see how I'm just basically securing that dubbing on top. And we wanna keep that right on top of the hook, Ben, as I go down into here. Now what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna leave us a little bit <clears throat> like this at the bottom. And I wanna take and just trim a really small antenna off the back. Okay, so when this fly comes out, which I'll show you at the end, um, but it just basically creates a little bit of an antenna shape almost so you could almost imagine it's looking like the, um, the tail of a shrimp, basically. Just kind of fans out a little bit, like so. So now we're gonna proceed by tying in a couple of materials that we're gonna then wrap back forward um, once we get to the next step. So you got some, um, some size small gold wire, okay? You're gonna have that in your kit. So go ahead and pull that out. We're gonna secure that right here. Midway. So a couple questions yep. as you secure your wire. This is like a semi-seal. Yeah, dubbing. very similar. Yes. Yeah, very similar. This is what we call seal dubbing. Yes. I was, jo I was joking. It's not seal. It's not even. I was joking. It's not even semi seal. It's from a seal. I took it and went to a seal. <sighs> Boo. Concert. I went to a seal. Why? Why did the music stop? When, I don't know. <laughs> when my joke ended. I don't know. Your joke ended. Probably because my ended. jokes are just as bad as Schwenson's. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Jim Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim. Jim's busy Poor tonight Jim. Poor Jim. working the uh, place in Canmore called The Joke Is On Us. Oh, I see. The Joke Is On Us. Okay, let's take our thread back to that midway portion on the fly again. And now we're going to grab this. We call it scud back or thin skin. Um, <clears throat> it's a few different names for it, but more or less, it's just kind of this rubbery material. Semi-translucent, so you can a little bit see through it. Um, this we're going to use tonight is an olive color, which is really perfect for this fly. We want to take this and tie this right on top. I'm going to kind of pinch it with my thumb so it stays on there. Get a gathering wrap around it. Make sure that the, the front edge of it is really locked in. And then I just need to maintain this right up on top of the hook shank as I move back all the way to where I left the antenna. Okay, so I want that to be basically right on top like that. So I got my wire, I got my scud back and my antenna in the front okay now i'm gonna leave my bobbin to hang and we're gonna go back to that dubbing and we're gonna make a dubbing noodle seems like we've been doing a lot of these lately um but we're gonna make another good one so remember a dubbing noodle is basically me just doing this motion okay onto the my thread but if you don't want to go like this when you put the dubbing between your fingers because then it doesn't actually um you know cord up on there i want to just take it in one direction okay so I'm gonna I've grab been waiting for a long time. <laughs> What's that? Well, your favorite band. Oh. I got to get... We got to have a boy band we night. We do, boy band night. We do. That's a good point. I'm going to have to change up a few of the <laughs> nights coming forward. So all I'm doing is I'm twisting this on my thread, like so. Get it nice and corded up. Now, you're going to want to do about three or four inches long um, dubbing noodle here. We're going to put a lot of dubbing in this, and you're going to kind of see why after, because we want this to look quite full plump you might say um, because we're gonna actually comb a whole bunch of this dubbing out and down out of the fly so you want to make sure you have a good healthy amount um, on your dubbing noodle I'm gonna go back and grab a little bit more and once you tie like we've said before if you tie in one tie 12 once you tie a dozen the last six are fast and really good 
Um, so I have the advantage of tying quite a few of these, so I already kind of know what I want to do with my dubbing noodle. Um, if you're really wise at it, you're gonna have a little taper. You're gonna see it starts a little skinnier, builds, gets thick, and finishes out here. A little bit of a taper again, but not totally necessary. This isn't an exact science on this fly. Oh, wait, just look at this. <laughs> I think it's Mr. Dickow's anniversary today. And he's hanging out with us. Oh man, that's dangerous. That is pretty special. That is special. Thank you for that. Okay, let's take this uh, let's take this dubbing and we're gonna work it forward. So we're gonna take our first wrap right back up against where we left all those materials. Try not to get any of this dubbing caught up in your hook. Hook point. We're just gonna make this nice plump body moving forward. Even if you're double wrapping on some of your wraps, just make sure you get lots on there. Kind of hard to get too much on this one because we do do a lot with it, even in combing it out. So I, I ended it quite nice, but I just want a little bit more to make it up to that head. I want to have just a pinch more so I can go in and add. And with, with this type of dubbing, it's also really easy to take it off your thread. So if you put too much on, it's going to be easy to pull off. <clears throat> I'm going to come here, finish off this head piece here. Basically gonna come right down to the eye. I'm gonna put a quick half hitch in there, just a little overhand knot, just to secure that so it's not gonna go anywhere. Now it's already starting to take some shape. It's got some, uh, it's got some fill in the body itself. Now we're gonna take that scud back and maintaining it right on top of the hook. And this is why it was important that when we tied it in, um, that we stayed right on top, um, perfectly on top of the hook tying in, because we want this to, to reflect and be the back of this fly. Um, if you've ever seen one of these guys, it almost looks like they got a shell on because they kind of do. And this is re really representing that shell back that they have. So I'm going to pull on it, not super tight, but I'm going to keep it taut. And I am going to take a thread wrap once I have it in the center of the hook eye. I'm going to take a couple thread wraps right there and then a couple wraps underneath. Make sure it's not going anywhere. And I can trim that out. Like so, set that aside because you still got enough to do another fly. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do one more half hitch as I wrap my wire forward now. So I'm going to set that out of the way. I'm going to take this and start wrapping forward. Nice, evenly spaced wraps. Coming up the fly. This is creating segmentation in the body itself. Not only in the fact that it's depressing some of that, but it's also got some flash and color in that gold wire. So I'm gonna take a couple of wraps behind the wire to finish it off, a couple in front. Repeat that. And you go ahead, like always, and grab your buddy scissors <clears throat> and trim that out. Uh, if I can find them, I lost them earlier. I almost had to get wide. Not yeah, almost, well, you had to use the good up. ones. There they are. I knew I put them somewhere. Get that out of there. And now guys, we're basically ready to whip finish this fly. Um, and then we're gonna work on getting the rest of it kind of pulled out and trimmed and all that. I'm just gonna say, I think I've already got a winner for the... for the. Oh, really? Oh man, who's that? Don't oh. say anything. <laughs> That's good. That is good. <coughs> oh, jeez. Some people went for it. What can you say? All right. Get to whip finish this a couple times here, two or three turns. Get that out of the way. You do want to make sure you have that good and secure because when we go to grab this with a brush here in a minute, we don't want to accidentally pull that thread out. So it's almost done, guys. It, it looks pretty accurate at the moment, but if you actually look at one, you can see they got a ton more legs in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in there and tease this out um, with some Velcro. So this super simple tool, but it's just a uh, a tongue depressor with a little piece of Velcro on the end. And this is thanks to Mr. Jared Brown. Yeah, this was Jared Brown. Mountain Man Jared Flies took care of us for a lot of years. Yeah. Built us these. And the reason that I like this style of them is because they're so thin. So you can get up underneath that hook gap and actually get the get the material teased out. Whereas if you got those wider tools, it doesn't always work, the manufactured ones. But anyways, we're gonna come in here. And you can make yourself a lot of these and share them with your friends. That's right. We're gonna comb out that bottom, we're gonna comb out the sides. Make sure you kind of evenly tease it out all over the place. Should have something look similar to that. It looks really good. Now we got tons of legs. Now it's really looking accurate. And all we're gonna do to finish this off is we're gonna come in and trim those legs off. 
So I kind of take an angle from the point of the eye, or sorry, from the hook eye to the point of the hook. Now I come in here and trim. So when should you use a dubbing noodle compared to a loop? Well, that's a personal preference to be honest, but a lot of I it comes down say, to speed. Would you say, what I would say, is a loop, you kind of want more of a brushy fly, like you want to pull more out without, <laughs> you know? Normally like, you use a loop on a streamer. Yeah, or really like, use it on a like a brush, kind of giving it that brush appearance. Yeah. Because if you put it in a dubbing loop, you can really work at teasing it out um, before you ever even wrap it on. Whereas if I d if I took a brush to it when I just dubbing noodled that up, it would all just come off the thread. Um, so that's just kind of the difference. So you see that that shape there I trimmed came down like so. Now I'll readjust this in my vise a little bit so you can also see the antennae. The antennae. And guys, that is your simple scud. Although it actually is a really great representation of the fly. Um, it's super simple, super easy to tie. There's some very minor um, changes you can make to this fly that really can change it up too. So what I see a lot done is um, taking just a little bit of ice dub in orange or in red or something like that. And right at the end of your dubbing noodle is adding just a little oh. bit of orange to it right up at the head. And then you just get like this different, it's almost like a it's hot, hot spot. spot. Um, and then when you comb it out, also some of that comes out into legs and it's just a really cool thing. Yeah. And lots of people put just a spot of that in at the end of their noodle. So there's an idea too. Or just change the colors, yeah, whatever. Change the colors, yeah. Um, some of the questions here, just to kind of go back that I had a flag. Sam Superstar, what's up? Jeremy hey, from Sundry. And uh, this could be a no SOS tie. Yes, <laughs> that is a fact. Yeah. Um, Richard, I think it's Piche. I think Jim lent him his kit tonight so that he could tie along with us oh, yeah. um but no so, jokes <laughs> yeah so richard welcome jim had mentioned you and i hope you're having fun and i hope you're learning lots and any question here is a great question we don't we yeah. don't uh, it's not to be intimidating here and i know you had kind of an off experience somewhere uh an off experience uh with with that so this is a safe place to ask questions whatever you want um, so like Matt said about, do we use them on the bow? Well, I have taken throat samples from fish and I've seen lots of scuds, mm -hmm. but I can't say I've truly <coughs> never really fished, fished them. them. I actually have fished them a lot on mountain streams and yeah, done very true. well. That's true. And I don't and sure think I've don't. ever seen a scud no. out there. So scuds uh, like, for one thing, they like warm water, weeds, muddy bottom. So you kind of need those those trigger things while well, in a, in a freestone creek in the river you're not yeah and sorry in the mountains you're probably not seeing that but um, yeah yeah great for still water um but that's a good thing so you there's there's sow bugs and scuds and yeah. i think there's always kind of a, co a common uh like you, you they're, think they're, they're the same they're but they're different but or whatever something like sow that sow bugs are um have very few legs and they're actually got a really flat back on them but we have i have actually throat or not yeah throat sampled sow bugs out of um on the bow i've never fished them but i've seen them so they're there yeah so try it because honest to god uh matt this could look like a caddis pupa yeah touche. and it could fish like a caddis pupa so sometimes naivety is brevity what does brevity mean? It rhymes. It rhymes, so that's all that matters. <laughs> it rhymes. So, uh, yeah, that's the simple scud. Simple scud. And uh, try it on your ponds. Try it on your rivers. Um, if you want, you could put weight underneath of it, like under underneath, like when you tie it. If you wanted it to be heavier, yeah. Uh, put split shot on. There's there's lots of ways of getting your flies down. Yeah. I hardly ever tie weighted flies like extraordinary weight on flies mm -hmm. um because i used to have i used to tie a bunch of stone flies that were weighted and a bunch that weren't and i'd put a little orange hot spot on the ones that weren't weighted and then i got them mixed up and then you're like and then you run out of the weighted ones or the not weighted ones and it's like yeah so, yeah, yeah hey look who's here costa mr Calais. yeah mr costa so if anybody else 
because <laughs> I had a call about here. Do it. Believes me when I talk about microcurrents on the Bow River. Uh, yes. He might. Because uh, I'm still it. greased by a good friend, a great client, and an even greater <laughs> complainer. <laughs> I was really curious how you were going to finish yeah, that statement. I was too. So, I was super curious. Well so. done. Well, done. well, that's the simple <laughs> scud and simple scud. tied. So and you can check out the simple, uh, the simple ties, quick ties. Quick ties, check it out. After, if you, if you didn't get in that. So since <clears throat> nobody sent us in anything this week that would make the baking cam, I decided to make something for the baking cam. Ooh. And it goes a little something like this. Tell me more. Why don't you grab your good mic? <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, I'm done with that. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's get back over here. Let's get you back in tight. I'm uh, here to talk to you about your I wonder if I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> I didn't buy any. Yes, I did. did. There's no baking did. cam. Oh, sorry. Baking cam. All right, folks. Oh. This is the Dutch baby pancakes. Oh, man. Where are those? Uh, well, they're upstairs <laughs> when I took the photo. <laughs> There's too many difficulties with the... So those... Uh, I got that recipe right from the Yellowstone Ranch cookbook. And if you think that the fish like scuds, Dutch baby pancakes are so delicious that, uh, look at that. Mm. I added the raspberries, the blueberry, and the homemade vanilla whipped cream. That does look um, super good. I but yeah, and then I used maple syrup and, and all the good stuff. But there it is, folks. That's the Dutch baby pancakes. And uh, if you're not hungry now, then when? <sighs> I know. Uh, Guess I'm gonna have to settle for some M and M's. Yeah. So super weird, folks. If you've if you just tuned into us, because usually at about 54 minutes is when we kind of hit our peak audience retention. That's an, that's why we got bingo. That's why we play bingo at that time. So everybody here has a chance to win. But most importantly, if you haven't got your photo of your Yellowstone outfit into us. Then you can email it to TNL. Yeah, you're going to want to do that. TNL at flyfishingbowover.com because I'm looking at them right here. <clears throat> so far, I got a winner. Uh, Haley Oliver. That is a great costume and outfit. Well done. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are tying or if that's just from an event in the past. <laughs> and if you're here... Um, but as good as that is, we've got better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the commitment oh, level. Man, just good. wish this person was at tracks tonight with this. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So uh, that's good. <laughs> Change our minds. Change our minds about who we want this yeah. to take this way. Right oh, now. Roman, what's up, brother? <clears throat> Roman Quintana. Yeah. Where is he from? Stop by. Montana. Montana. Mr. That's Quintana from Montana. We're here for you, brother. I know. I've Times have been a little tough, man, but like we chatted about the other day, sending good vibes mm -hmm. your way. Quintana from Montana. Every Everyone's day. excited to see you. So Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, let's try this. If Cole is at Trax and Haley's there's more. at Trax. That's why. Oh, well, there. Cole. Was that picture at Trax? Cause I... Dang. Oh, well, good for you. Good for you. We'll see you later. Maybe that was it. No, that's. Oh, that is old. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's, that's old. old. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is. That is the exit door. That tracks. No, I think that's a Halloween. That's. I don't. Maybe tracks has cobwebs. Sorry, you guys can't see what we're looking at. <laughs> maybe we'll head over to this scene so we can at least see some comments. So. Yeah, that helps. Haleo is at tracks. Okay. Bulldogs. Yes, that's true. That is Bulldogs. Okay, guys, hold tight one sec. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to check in with. Kill the background music. Tim is super cranking loud. That's why Am you I? hear the hiss. Oh. Well, it's just the hiss and the. <sighs> You're always trying to turn me down. All right. Oh, look <laughs> at this. Hold, hold on, guys. So we have <laughs> Mr. Cole Fitzsimmons. What's up, Where's Cole? Oh, there he is. Looking good. We're going to have brother. some major reverb from Cole. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so it's just going to keep muting out like this. So. Maybe step outside the of tracks. See, we're we're live yeah. at tracks. Step outside, 
And then what you can do is we'll tell everybody what you're going to do. Sure. There he is. Yeah, see? That's all right. That's all right. Did you ride? Where's your horse tied up? (laughs) By the barn. (laughs) Why don't you tell everybody what you brought for some giveaways to for somebody at tracks? Yeah, so uh, everybody, my name's Cole. I'm with the Game Warden Apparel Co. And pretty much what we're all about is everybody that enjoys fishing and enjoys having the resource available to go out fishing and keeping it for generations to come is considered to be a warden in our minds. So what I brought today is uh, a couple items from our store that we are going to release on Monday is we got uh, a couple hats. Oh, with yeah. Logo on. Ooh, ooh, come on. Mm-hmm. It's all back. Well, we, it see, we see it. Game yeah. Warden Apparel Co. Yeah, I got a hat and it's brand new, too. Oh, yeah, that's Dang. legit. Look at that. That's awesome. Jelly. Yeah. Jelly, jelly. Okay, yeah. so you just want to give those away. And... Uh, I'm I'm gonna kind of like mute you once you run inside, but uh, I think you wanted to give it away to the loudest person at tracks, and uh, hopefully we can start to hear the people right now. We're gonna turn your mic down, but <laughs> but we'll watch you as you run in there and find somebody who deserves this. <laughs> who just like, sounds like people are we've just noise. Mu- <laughs> we've muted them because it would be a gong show with the feedback. It would be. And uh, oh, well, there's there? oh, oh look at oh so look at this WWE here. wrestling. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that right there? Oh, look at that handsome fella. Oh, there you go. We got oh, a, got we, a got a, we got a we got a hat. I feel like this is like Space Odyssey. Is there yeah. one more one more giveaway, or did you give them both? We can't hear you. Get a sign language. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I can turn you up, but it's not gonna work. Okay, tracks pub. Uh oh, we got some more people there. What's up, guys? We got some people over there. Cole's right there. Well, you guys hang tight. We got another fly to tie, and then we're gonna pop over and say hi. Say so, hello. Without much further ado. Howdy, duty. We appreciate it, Cole. Yeah, thanks so much, Cole. That's awesome. And uh, we'll s- we'll see you in a bit, everybody at Tracks Pub. We might not be wearing our our outfits because <laughs> we don't have pants <laughs> on. <laughs> No That's, is that are. optional attracts? Pants are optional attracts. Well, see you later. scissors that can make the cut. Oh, All right. I'm back. Back in black. You guys like my beard tuck? <clears throat> yeah, I, I gotta be tuck. honest, it does I didn't weird cut me a little it. bit. I didn't cut it. No. It's like the first time you've probably ever seen my neck. Yeah. Do you shave your chest too? Nope. I think that you do. Just from steer wrestling. <laughs> just huh. rubbed it right off, eh? Yeah, well when you get those burly animals oh, I know. in there. I shave daily. Oh wait, uh... what's what's that? You got <laughs> you barely what, what this? <laughs> well yeah. Folks we, or the, we or, would or this. We, <laughs> Where's Jed? Where's Steve? I don't Where's even Steve? know. Probably a couple gummy him. bears, and that's, uh, I'm a gummy bear. It's all on his back. Did Dana uh, trim the beard? No, he didn't. But, folks. Nobody said much f- about my beard. I just think it's coming in pretty good. I think somebody did, they said. Oh. They said the best part about Tim <laughs> is, is his... <laughs> Damn, Tim turning into a grizzly bear. All right. I've always been a All right, bear. folks. 
grab your bingo cards because we've got a giveaway. Yes. Take a look at this can. All of these tools from uh, one of our viewers <clears throat> who donated them to us from Anadromus. I think it's Anna Anadromus. 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 And they're pretty Anadromus. epic tools. Anadromus <laughs> Fly Company. Anadromus Fly Company. Some scissors. We've got all these stickers. <laughs> We've got all this fly time material. Can't grow grass on a playground. <laughs> we got a shore fishing shirt. Oh, man. And we've got a shirt from Trax Pub, where the party's at tonight. So, All right, so this is kind of how it works. I know you can't see the first, the first one there, so let me see if I can fix that for you. Looks like a formulator. Yeah, bingo time. Okay, so uh, what you need first is four corners to win. Uh, when you get it, you yell bingo. Pretty simple. That's kind of mm -hmm. how it works. And then uh, I'm going to see if I can pull this up. A bit. For transparency, guys, that's why we're showing you this. Just because there has been a confusion last, not the last few weeks, but a couple times where there is at times, it, there'll be like three or four bingos yeah. that come up. But and we can show you it, it's just a tiebreaker thing. We have a program to choose for us. Um, just so you guys know, it's not like we're picking favorites or something. Nope. So there it is. Our first four calls. The Hackle Beetle, the Shop Vac, the Royal Wolf, and the Foamulator. And unlike last time we played bingo before the new year, not all of your cards are going to be, uh, not all of what you see is going to be on everybody's cards because yeah. we just tried to get a little more variation happening in there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Eric says type it instead of yelling it. But hey, if you get excited... Uh, <laughs> This beer does look good, and it's brought to us he's talked to about my beer. by our friend Justin Fisher. Yeah. Justin Fisher is What's up, Justin? hopefully still coming up to my house tomorrow to install a new hot water tank, because ours is, ours is not doing All good. That, that cold stuff did not do good. No. Uh, yeah, so if your bingo card has expired, you have to download a new one, and that's what it said in the description of this episode. So typically we get kind of four episodes out of your bingo card. And if it's expired, just go back in and grab another one. All right. So we're going to go next call is Devil Bug. Devil Bug. The Watermaster Flying Go. Mm -hmm. So does everybody know what a Watermaster is? Well, it's a picture of it right there. It is a super convenient, portable, durable. It folds up into a backpack and you can hike it in. And when you get there, the pump's in the backpack. And trust me, I've been on them. And they are super easy to get in and out of where you got to go. Um, is it super light? It's doable. It's very doable, very doable. and portable. And um, <coughs> yeah, definitely look into those some more. Anybody call? Why are the shirts unbuttoned too much? Well, it's for Mark. Mark, <laughs> this is for you because... <laughs> We're, we're just trying to let our, our scars... Where are they? Scars oh, heal. It is Yellowstone. Kinda... This is how they hang out in the bunkhouse. Okay, let's call another one. The Foam Cricket. The Foam, foam Cricket. Well, cricket. Ben, take your shirt off, but according to you in your text earlier, you gained 12 and a half pounds on your trip to Mexico. <laughs> so you might want to make sure that you're the only one. Mm -hmm. Don't forget me. We're not forgetting you, Blake. I'm not sure what we're How forgetting. How could we forget Blake? Never. All right. Thursday Night Live Fly Tying is the next call on the bingo. We do bingo every week, brought to you by our friends at Watermaster. And we all of our sponsors have given us tons of really cool things uh, for the rest of the year to give to you guys. And then if you've been here before, uh, the final episode is pretty epic. And the amount of stuff that we have to give away on the final episode... It's incredible. Yeah, you don't want to miss that one. That is a fact. All right, number nine. We're just going to keep going, <laughs> and if we get a tie, we get a tie. Rough water caddis. You need to get all four corners. All four, all four corners. We do. There's a delay between when we. I will call the corner. <laughs> Terry, call a corner already. Oh, Scotty Borshell called bingo. bingo. All right, Scotty, we need your bingo ID card. Yeah, let us know the ID. 
And, and there's possible give me your ID more. and tell me which call the bingo was on. Zero four nine is what he's saying. All right, this could be. <clears throat> is Scotty one of our East Coast guys? Michigan. Oh, Michigan. Well, that's pretty East Coast-ish. Oh, Kelsey got one too. Kelsey is zero nine seven. So we're gonna probably have a tie break here. Alright, so he got it before on the rough water caddis. Check out zero nine. So seven. he was on number nine, just remember that. Yeah. Zero nine seven. Grizzly Raft. So it came on number nine is when Scott got it. He got it on the, as you can see here, the Grizzly Raft is what the Kelsey got it on. Mm -hmm. And Scott got it on the Rough Water Caddis. So because of the delay, the bingo came in on call number nine. So we've got a winner in Scott Borschel. Scott, uh, send an email to nice. TNL. Am I missing something? Nope. That's good. I just watched it. Uh, Mike McKenna is 0 for 60. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, too. <laughs> Fuzzy math. Yeah, Scott. Yeah. No, it works out. That's good. Right. Glad you got it, buddy. Yeah, Scott. Good job. And um, what are we at for time? 7.59. 8 o'clock. Should we uh, do it? Play yeah, a film? Do it. All right, guys. We let's do this. We're going to go through the pictures. We're going to play a little short film because we got the quick ties. So if anybody's got to leave, we'll be sad and disappointed. And uh, and then we're gonna come back in. We're gonna tie the the. Uh, you got it. Stone. Stone flop. flop. Stone flopper. Yep. Stone flopper. Stone flopper. Okay. Stone flopper. And then we're gonna do the the giveaway for. We're gonna do this after the stone flopper. The sound link color two, uh, from Mr. Blake Teague. So yeah, anyways, uh, here we go. We're getting a little video, a short film called The Privilege. It was a runner up in the Stimmies Fly Fishing Film Festival. It's unfortunate because I thought it was pretty good. So uh, a little. Humble. He also did create the film, so don't forget that part. <laughs> That's humble or cocky? <clears throat> no, you are humble. Oh. You should be slightly more cocky. Um, anyways, got to tell a story about a really good friend and fellow guide of mine and something I like to do on Father's Day is kind of put these together. So I think it's only like six or seven minutes and we'll be right back. So don't leave. Hang tight. My wristwatch is broken. My shoes are untied. Time is a ticking, and so is the tide. But I am not worried, things are what they are. Come rain or come shine or a shooting star. I've been to the south, I've been to the north. My name's Quinn Stiles. I'm uh, pushing 50. Um, yeah, I run an outfitting company called Trout Farmer. It fishes mostly on the bow um, and, and points south in Alberta. I'm Jack Stiles. Um, Been a line and my goose hanging high. I'll be okay in the sweet by and by. I think I started fly fishing when I was around eight ish, properly. I've been doing it since and something since I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> so, it, you know, uh, in in the early '90s. So, sorry to stop. Sorry to stop. Yeah, put it down. Oop. So, where do you think the A spot is on this run here? Um, a little bit inside and above where it was cast. Right. See how the, the, the stream comes around mm -hmm. around the corner like that. Mm -hmm. So, probably right on that faint seam line. Mm -hmm. Also, perhaps on the outside. Mm -hmm. 
my goose hanging high. I'll be okay in the sweet by and by. I'll be you know, it's, it's, okay I don't look at I don't look at it in terms of investment. You know, if if um, you know, my daughter isn't so much into fishing, right? Um, but she's really into other things, and 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 Jack's into fishing, um, and hunting and stuff. And I think you know, if if they were into widgets or tiddlywinks, I'd invest the same amount of time. Well, he's eating tight, like he's and he's just sitting in there, and that that it's like a it's like an Edward. No, you just go like this. Like this. Like this. Like this. <laughs> Once more. Like this. Until it all breaks down. But I need it so I will stay around. When you're all messed up, it's a great relief to be understood. It's a shame still waters run deep. So let us walk right into the forest, to the trees and the rising sun. It is something we can't outrun. This is super cool. Nice. Look at him. Brown air. Little brown air. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Little brown air. Little brown air. Little brown air. Uh, my favorite way to fish is probably dry fly fishing. Uh, I really like it just because. It's more of a, um, um, stand on that rock. And I don't think you have to go for power casts. No. Because you're gonna, you're gonna totally skew me. Okay, stop. <laughs> okay. Go. Where is it? Can you see a fly? Hit him. And also, I'm shivering like a... <laughs> What's with the Rambo, eh? <laughs> He's full, full Rambo. Rambo dives, yeah. Huh? Full, like, Rambo dives. Oh, that's really good. It's a little cool. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. The, the guy I got to spend a lot of time, that got me into fishing was my grandfather on my mom's side. And um, ever since I was uh, tiny, I was his fishing buddy. And so we went fishing all the time. Uh, any spare moment, once the chores were done, um, yeah, we'd go fishing early in the morning before everybody was up and we'd catch kokanee for breakfast. Or if we got the chores done, then we could go fish some mountain lakes in BC. We'd do that, yeah. So it was mostly him. Um, ever since I was, you know, I, I can't even remember till, till he passed. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good to see you. Got a party? Woo! Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. nice to see you. Well, the, these guys are doing their own dance. Yeah. I've never seen like a full on. I like that. Yeah. No, it's awesome, cool. isn't it? Yeah. And especially these big, big mayflies. Look at them, they're gorgeous. They're huge. I really love fishing in general, but it, it's really quite special to me when I'm able to go out with my dad. Um, 
I've been doing it for quite a while and I enjoy it. For me, it's not about catching the fish. It's great to just spend the entire day with my dad talking all the time, making memories. Um, it's always super fun. Come on. That was a good cast. No! Damn it. Did he eat it? Yeah. I felt it for a second, that's why I pulled it this way. <laughs> the privilege of a father is I mean, it's, it's your kids, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I remember reading a quote, when, I think it was, I don't know who said it, but um, as parents, you owe your kids everything and your kids owe you nothing. Um, and that made a lot of sense to me, right? That's, that's the crux of being a father, right? In, in that you're, 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 you're raising, you're raising children to be good people. And it's not about preaching, it's not about talking, it's about setting an example. Because I think, you know, kids are sponges and um, they watch everything that you do, right? How you talk to your wife, how you interact with people, um, how you fish, right? What you enjoy. And you can point out things and sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you're a dad, you're, you're a father. Um, my favorite thing about my dad is just how caring, understanding, just happy in general. Super fun to be around him, just, yeah. You guys are gonna spend a lot of time together, eh? Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Parenthood is not something to be taken um, lightly. It's the most important job and I think if you do the job properly um, and well um, you can raise two great humans, right? That, it's, it's wonderful. I mean like how, what's, more, what's, what's better than that? Nothing. Well, that doesn't hit you in the, the feelers. Okay, that's... Yeah. That's fly fishing. <laughs> yeah. And a video about it. <laughs> I can't. Um, no, super good job, man. That, that was a great film. Every time I watch it. Yes, it's just fun to tell stories that are truly authentic um, and such as yours the year before on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, this was another super fun story to tell so anyways well let's gather our thoughts here if you guys uh that that film's on youtube so if you guys want to watch it again you can go to our youtube channel uh check it out share it with your friends it's just a great message and i, I don't want you to share it because because it's something that i did i want you to share it because i think that it's important for a lot of more fathers and sons to realize that uh time is fleeting and it's important uh, to spend time together. Yeah. And fly fish is such a cool thing when you get to do it together because of the places that it takes you and, you know, everything else that was summed up in that film. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So all right, all right. where are we at? Where are we at? You guys good? Well, you guys good? You still with us? Tracks Pub. Say what? Say what? what? Okay. It's 812 here on the... One province from the West Coast, known as Alberta, <laughs> and uh, right, Dan Lattery, and this Tim Hepworth, and we're dressed up tonight because it is the Yellowstone-themed night, and we've pretty much got our winner already picked out, if I could get to that, but I'm not going to tell you guys, I'm not going yet. to tell you, because <laughs> we still have stuff to give away, uh, but let's go finish tying the yeah. final fly of the night, which is the Stone Flopper. I'll let Tim Stone take flopper, it. yeah. So we're going to get our way. You can switch your mic as phone. <laughs> yeah, let's get over. We'll get onto this microphone again. And it's not quite as good, but that's all right. So this next fly we are tying is called the Stone Flopper. So this is what it looks like. So this is a fancy kind of combination between a stone fly <clears throat> and a grasshopper. 
Um, and once you finish tying this fly and you look at the bottom of it, which I'll show you a quick little picture. Bailu's out. He's got to go to bed. There we go. See you later, Bailu. So if you look at that profile on this fly when it's done, it really could go either way. And that's the, kind of the cool thing about this bug. Either way. And either what way. do you mean? You know. We did bingo. James, how's the uh, comedy fest? <laughs> yeah. He still got in somehow. All right. So go ahead into your, um, <clears throat> into your season four, episode four kit. We're going to grab out that second package. It's going to look like this. Okay. You got all your materials to do this, this pattern in there. We are going to tie, or sorry, we're going to open this up and get the fly in the vise. So this one is a, we're tying this on a streamer hook. It's a pretty small one. <clears throat> I think this is about a size eight. So this will be a smaller version of this bug. You could tie these all the way up to like a size two because we obviously have some really big grasshoppers and we have some really big stone flies. Um, so lots you can do with this. With this, uh, this I bug. did tell everybody if we had 150 shares that you would chug a beer. So <sighs> oh, I, yeah. I need to check because I haven't check. checked here for a bit. 149, 149, uh, 149. Let me just refresh. <laughs> 76 shares. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so uh, feel free to share. <laughs> we hit 150. You could share it to your, your timeline, your mom's timeline, your grandma's timeline. Just about anywhere. Anywhere you have the ability to <laughs> share it. We got to hit 150, and we're right. going to see Jimmy chug a beer. Jimmy chug a beer. Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, we'll try anyways. Okay, so get Sharon, and then let's get back to the bug. So what I'm tying um, with thread, for thread for this fly, is I'm going to use some brown, and this is going to be some 6 aught uni, or comparable, um, go over to, let's say, a UTC 140 or 70, but I like a little bit bigger thread when we're tying with foam, um, simply because if your, thread, if your thread is too thin, it can actually cut through the foam, and we don't want that to happen. So... Let's go ahead and start our thread on our hook. So I'm gonna get this started. <clears throat> Dana wants to bring my other camera so we can see the. No, I'm trying to get the music going. So <laughs> oh, you I just see. you just relax. You get all your stuff going. There we go. Now we can see it. Yeah. Okay. So I just started that thre started the thread on the hook. Change. We're gonna change the speed. Change the speed a bit. All right. I'm good. I'm done with it. Okay. So we're gonna come to nah, somewhere between the point and the barb. Um, you got a couple of these white rubber legs in your kit. We're going to go ahead and grab one of them. And then I'm going to take that long one and I'm going to cut it in half because I don't need all of it. And <clears throat> we're going to start off this fly with tying in the back legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap it around my thread. I'm going to even up the tips, pull it straight vertical, pull it down. So you see the kind of the cool trick about doing this with materials around your thread is that you can decide where it comes in. And once I have it on there, I'm gonna take a thread wrap to kind of hold it in place. And that's the shape we're, we're aiming for here is that they're gonna kind of splay out and go off the back. So I'm gonna kind of hold them splayed just a little. And I'm gonna work that all the way back just to the edge of the bend. Don't wanna go into it too deep, but I kind of get right back to the edge of it. Could probably go even a little bit further because those legs are gonna kind of splay and come up like that. We gonna, just hit 100 shares, so oh it's working. Man, people it's, are, it's working, 150. The people want it. <laughs> I, want, I want it. I've already shared it. <laughs> yeah, you've already I'm already it. banned from everywhere. Half of the shares are yours. Blake, thank you for the compliments on my music. And <clears throat> Chaz complimented me. Oh, Tim, no, I'm feeling real good about myself Guys, lately. you got to be careful. Because for a long time, no, people no, no, were no. really critical about my music. I know, but you got to pace yourself, yeah. guys. If you do it too much in one night. No, nope, head, keep coming. His head's not going to fit in that Seven hat. and three-eighths in my... 20 gallon bucket right here folks all right all right i did saddle the horses tim you can't <laughs> ride quite yet <laughs> no not yet can you use black instead of brown <clears throat> uh yeah definitely shake go ahead and use some black thread you can Any use white too yeah anything dark light whatever we're not really seeing the thread on this fly so it's not a, a huge deal what color you use um next thing in your kit you have is you have this uh rubber you get looks like a rubber leg but it's actually what they call it a floss leg we're gonna go ahead and grab that. That's gonna be the rib on this fly. So we're gonna tie tie that in, just kind of right behind where we left those legs. And we'll work that back all the way to those rubber legs, okay? All right, so now that we've got that all tied in, uh, what do you need? Good, just a good thing was uh, Steve just said, great job on packing the hair. So remember guys, okay, yeah. this is a, 
this is a process that I promise you will never get perfect ever. We we'll, we probably won't even come close because in people that helped us put this stuff together, it's it's you we can never get a machine to do this. All right? It's hand done. And so one of the comments last year was they wanted deer hair to be packed a little better. We so we tried to improve those things. So thanks Steve for noticing that. Yeah. Having said that, sometimes there's going to be a little piece of item that's missing in your kit because it just happens. We apologize in advance and we tell you it's not going to be perfect. It's going to happen. But Steve, uh, sometimes all we hear is the bad stuff about that. So we appreciate that feedback. Yeah, no, we do, Steve. That's awesome. Thank you for that. It's good to know that I'm, I'm kind of like off. the sun and Teletubbies. I just show up when I want to say. Hey, grab me a beer while you're there. Well, I thought you were the purple Teletubby. There you go. Oh, I like that one. Ooh, brown ale. I drink I drink my beer based upon the pictures on it. Yeah, <laughs> Nothing that's else. That's true. It is true. Okay, guys. We got that rib tied in. So now we're going to go over to, in your kit, if you check here, we got this kind of tannish color dubbing. Now you could change up this dubbing to kind of maybe um, go to different colors that might signify more of a hopper or more of a stonefly. We went kind of neutral on this one, so we're gonna stick with this kind of tan color. Now we're gonna make a pretty plump body on this guy. So we're gonna make another dubbing noodle like we did on the last fly. Um, this one's gonna be again, probably four inches at least long. So we're gonna go in, work that dubbing into our thread. Now, some of you are thinking, probably thinking, oh, you're tying on a Norvice. Why don't you spin it on the special way and blah, you blah, should. blah. I, I can do that. Um, we haven't really Norvice it up too no, much. No, we haven't too much. I, I just, I kind of stay away from it just a smidge, guys, because I know that there's, the majority of you out there probably aren't tying on one. Um, and it's, it can be a little confusing to, to see it more than one way, but. Just intimidate. P people love the beer fridge. Matt yeah. says, where, what the devil, where did you score that fridge from? <laughs> Tell, tell him, Dana. I'll tell you guys. So Tim's just going to walk gonna start, you through. Yeah, I'm just going to start wrapping uh, this forward. Go ahead. and. Common things that happen with dubbing your thread is that your dubbing will untwist and and come off. So it's not happening here. <laughs> if it does, you just you got to remember, Tim, talk about it again, that people go both ways. And we only need them to go one direction. One direction direction so yeah. let me let me bring it be, somebody <laughs> called the name of the teletubby up here and uh mike i favorited your comment about the legs we'll talk about that after and someone said tipsy whipsy uh anyways the sun let me bring let me <laughs> let me bring the sun in here sun. yeah so that uh beer fridge came from yeah. My daughter's 13th birthday, she ordered, well, she got for her birthday, a makeup, apparently makeup has to be refrigerated I'm now. I'm still confused by this. I don't understand Do you why. refrigerate your makeup? No. I don't no. either. The moisturizers. So anyways, uh, you know, Amazon sent two. So Janine was going to return it. And I said, hey, we don't have a beer fridge in our office. And that holds six beer and it keeps them really cold. So... Uh, there we are on a shoestring budget with a <laughs> six can <laughs> beer fridge and we can also keep our moisturizer yes, we super can. cold. Our beard oils. For those, for, mostly <laughs> for my beard, not for yours. For those but. dry <laughs> winter days. Oh man. And I'm out. And you're out. <clears throat> Tell the W.O. So guys, now that we're at this point, we're going to grab that rib. So that brown, the, the brown, well, brown yeah. floss. Brown we tied in there. cow now. We went over this before the show. <sighs> oh no, brown Could cow. Could you eat the guy, but brown cow now. <laughs> we're going to, um, kind of like we did with a wire in the last fly, we're just going to evenly space out this wrap as we go forward. And what this is doing is, again, segmenting this body. It's giving it an appearance of that. We're going to come up to here. We're going to take our thread. A little trick there that you saw me do is my thread is laying down. I actually take the material and I wrap it around my thread to start. Then I go around, do it again, around. Now that's not coming out at all. So should people worry about the segmentation and the um, the bulges where? How they bulge and where? Or are you gonna pluck out some dubbing? No, I'm gonna pluck out some dubbing anyways on this that's one, guys. So if you take a look at this, <clears throat> the ribbing is there, it's important, right? But what we're gonna do with it is we're actually gonna go back in um, with that Velcro, if you've got it. Except this time we're just going on the bottom. So I'm gonna throw a quick half hitch in. 
Question, how much tension would you put on that flex? Uh, you can put lots of it, because um, it doesn't really matter, guys, if you if you compress that dubbing down, because we are gonna scrub some of it out. If we were not gonna scrub it out, then I would just say even tension, don't pull hard. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna tease some of this out, so it's fine. So then I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna tease some of this out, because this is gonna give the appearance of it being a little bit more buggy. You're gonna get a little bit of movement on off the bottom of this fly from it. Okay. Buggy, buggy, buggy. I don't want to overdo it, but I want to create it so you know you've kind of done it right if it looks it looks misty. You know, you got buggy. something coming off the bottom, it looks a little buggy. Um, we still can see our segmentations, but it's a little blurry looking. That's what we're going for here, okay? Super bright in here when you take off your sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Sven says you're teasing him. <laughs> teasing. We'll tease you. I'll tease you. We'll tease you with tease your fruity pebbles. Fruity pebbles. And the late night Zoom that. calls. Late night Zoom calls. Okay guys, next material we're gonna tie in here. We're gonna tie um, some foam in, okay? So in your kit, you've got this piece of foam. You gotta be a little strategic about it because we do need to use quite a bit in these next two flies. Um, if you, for, sorry, for tying this fly twice. But I wanna take a piece that's basically the hook width, or sorry, the uh, gap width of your hook. So I take it and measure it off there. That's where I'm gonna cut this. And I'm gonna cut a strip down that's basically, oh man, an inch at most. It's gonna sit on top of this fly. So I'm gonna do that first cut. I'm gonna take that out. This is just some simple craft foam, nothing crazy. People are questioning your scissors and their sharpness. My sharp scissors? Is that because you, huh, you thought they were mine on the quick ties? I did think they were yours in the quick tie. And you sawed off some wire? The thing is guys, you never, the, the precise thing about scissors is the tips right and, the, and coming back from the tips just a little bit um what's not so important is way back here in the guts of the, of the scissors so if i didn't have anything else around and i needed to use some uh you cut some wire i would just put the wire way back into the scissor and cut it and i'm not worried about it because i'm not using that back portion of the scissors anyways so what i'm left with here guys is i'm just left with a little piece of foam what i'm going to do is i'm going to shape the end into an arrow or into a point like that okay you gotta make it as even as you, you don't can. Don't use the back end of your scissors until you use the back end of your scissors. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> the very next cut. <laughs> Whatever. Still cuts foam. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay this right on top. Um, and how far do I wanna go back with this? I want it to sit, you know, a little bit off the back of the fly. Okay, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna be like way back here. Um, but I can control the overall, um, basically the overall shape and profile by how far I put this piece of foam on. So I want it to be back a little bit, not a crazy amount, but maybe like you could measure the hook gap width again, do that much, hanging off the back, something like that. Now I'm gonna switch hands, keeping this right on top of the fly. I'm gonna come in here and do a good pinch wrap. Just like that. So it stays right on top of the fly, okay? Now you could take a dab of super glue under that if you wanted to, but I, I'm not going to do that tonight. It's not, it really doesn't make a huge difference except for that you could never move it around much afterwards. I'm going to trim as much of that out as I can. And then I'm going to take my thread and really bind down the butts of that foam like so. Okay. So we got something that's looking like that from the underside. It's looking like that. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab, you have some crystal flash in there we're going to use this as part of the wing so you have one long piece here you should have probably one or two it doesn't matter we're all we're going to do is i'm going to fold that in half i'm going to cut it Oof, get my scissors in here and cut. cam has a weird fetish and wants to bite your nails yeah well i do all the time join the club uh, but it, you actually do it <laughs> yeah i do do it that's true so I basically just folded this crystal flash over a couple times. All I'm trying to do is create a little bit more um, pieces, but it's really not super important how many you put in. Um, I'm gonna, this makes out to, to a few, kind of like so. I'm gonna hang them off, and then I'll fold them over because I got some extra up here. Fold them back over, tie them in like so. Gonna bring them forward. I'm gonna trim them right at the back of that foam, like so. And when I put my deer hair in next, that's gonna lay them back pretty nice and they'll kind of stay out of the way. Oof, what's that? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing to see here, Tim. <laughs> that's the first time it happened yeah, to me. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's happened to me a couple times and I got a little, uh, some, uh, some People eyes, said some answer eyes. it. Answer it. That was okay. Mr. Dylan Ducher. Oh, the Dylan. 
He's so, gotta know better. <laughs> he does know better. So you're gonna take uh, about half of that hair that, that we gave you there, roughly. And what we're gonna do with it is we're gonna stick it in a hair stacker, also known as a deer stacker. To, to yeah, well, water. when you get a lot of deers and you gotta stack them. You gotta stack them deers. Every in there. time you say that on the I quick know. time, <laughs> I, I so I've stuck the tips in first into my deer stack. My deer stack. See, you did. <laughs> I told you. My hair stacker. Give it a few taps on the table, and now I'm gonna orientate it so that the bottom of the the hair stacker is pointed out. And I'm gonna pull it like that. And as you can see there, all the tips are stacked perfectly where I want them to be. Then I'm gonna come in, pinch them with my fingers, get out any of that under fur at this point, kind of pull in, pull some of that stuff out. Then I take a look at the tips. I'm like, how much of those, if there's any ones that are just kind of out on their own or making a mess, I'll pull them out. I'm pretty happy with what that looks like there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these right on top of that crystal flash and foam. And I'm gonna also extend them about to the back of the foam. Okay, roughly right there. I'll switch hands. Now the important thing here, guys, is my first wrap is not a tight one. If I were to pull tight, that's just gonna flare straight up and, the, and that hair is gonna basically stand straight up off the top of the fly, which is not what I want. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a tight wrap and I'm gonna start wrapping forward. And as I go forward, I'm gonna start making tighter and tighter wraps until I get down near the eye. I can take some tight wrap there. And then I'm slowly gonna work my wraps back up the fly or up the hair, sorry, and add a little bit more tension, but not a ton. Now I'm just using compression over actual tension, and that allows that hair is still gonna, you can see when it let go here, it's gonna pop up, but it's not gonna pop straight up like it would have otherwise. See how it lays back a bit instead of going straight up? So I'm gonna keep working that back because I'm not quite back to the, I want it to be even where I tied in that foam. Get back a little ways more. Go to right about there. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim out all the butts. The what what in the butt hut. I'm gonna trim all that out. Take my thread forward. Really bind the butts into the hook itself. And then move back up. Sven says that's looking really good, but I think what he's doing actually is looking in the mirror right now. Oh, could be. I don't think he even has the show on. Doubt it. He's got an orator texting for him <laughs> you're good enough you're great enough and gosh darn it people like you Svensson <laughs> you Mr. handsome Svensson. devil handsome devil okay so from this point guys <clears throat> we actually are almost done we have a couple things to do still but we're getting close I'm gonna take that foam again and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut another piece that's virtually the same width as the last one we're gonna go with about that um, that hook width hook gap width sorry and I'm gonna take that like so can see it and I'm gonna take that and cut it in half because I'm only gonna use I'm gonna tie to get the bullet head on this fly I'm gonna tie a piece in on the bottom and a piece in on top and to do that I'm gonna first trim little corners off like so okay and then I'm gonna come in here like this I'm gonna lay this right on top of here it's kind of awkward because you're actually tying back towards the front of the fly at this point but I'm gonna take a thread wrap down tighten it in take a few more bind the butt of that foam down on the hook like that and I'm gonna advance my thread right up until I hit all the way to the eye so I got to keep moving it make sure it's staying right on top right up to the front of the fly so I can see I can keep checking it now I can see yeah it's right up to the to the eye then I'll work my thread back really binding down that foam then I'll flip it upside down I'm gonna do the same thing on the underside so I'm gonna take that piece of foam again that I had trim trim I'm going to tie that in right there like I said it's kind of awkward at first once you get used to the fact that you're kind of tying back that way up the fly but once you get the hang of it it's pretty simple and this is a great way of making bullet heads and you see a couple there is different techniques to tying bullet heads on these flies but this is my favorite um, some people just put a piece of foam over top of the eye and poke it through um, I don't really like how that ends up sitting because the foam at the head ends up spinning then. Um, this way is I think the best, most secure way and it doesn't seem to spin on you. Now that I'm at this point, I'm going to pull that foam back right up to where I had left my thread up against that hair, take a couple wraps, that's the bottom half of my bullet, come to the top, I'm going to do the same thing, pull it back against that hair, take my wrap. Boom, there's my bullet head. Okay, <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim out 
trim out those pieces. Once I get this oriented, you kind of want to keep it right up on top of the fly the best you can. I'll go in and trim the bottom first, as tight as I can. If you've got any hair that's sticking down, try to get that out of the bottom of the fly and bring it back up off the sides. Or if you have to cut it, go ahead and do that. Once I'm at this point here, guys, I'm really close to done. I'm going to go back <clears throat> to those legs that I had before and I'm going to tie in another set of legs, one on each side. I want the, <clears throat> the back to hang back roughly to the back of the fly. I'm going to tie it in on the far side first. Take a couple wraps then I can situate it where I want it to be, kind of right on the side of that fly, like so. Make sure that's good and tight, not going anywhere. Come to the near side of the fly and repeat that. Get that locked into place. Once I got that where it is and I like it, I'm happy. I'm virtually done the fly. There's a couple things I'm still gonna do, but I'm almost there. I am gonna trim out the top of this a little bit more, but that actually, that top piece actually helps hold the hair back into position as well. So now I'm gonna go to the yellow foam you have in there. <clears throat> this is just cider foam. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that in half. So I'm left with something that looks like this. Now I'm going to take it and just tie just the very tip of it in and the long piece to the back because that's the piece that's going to sight and it's going to hang out. And I can take and I can trim that at whatever length I want, say somewhere in there. Now I'm going to see that, that nice yellow pronounced kind of post sitting up and it's going to help me be able to see this fly better in the water. Now we're going to go ahead and whip finish this fly and we got basically one more step after this and we're going to be done. Ooh. Ooh, uh, that was weird. Looked like a dubbed thread. It did. I'm going to do a three turn whip finish, do it one more time, trying to keep it right sucked into that foam, pull that tight, I'm going to trim my thread out at this point, get that out of the way. Now you can see on the bottom of the fly, I still got my nice, <clears throat> my nice um, underbody that the dubbing has been teased out. I'm going to try to get a little bit more of this foam out because I don't really want a ton Use left your, over. Use uh, your hair burner clean it up. Yeah, I could do that too. Watch this trick. What trick? Oh, I'm going to do it. it. I got to find it. It's right there. I put it there for you. So if you got any hairs that are sticking out and you don't want it to be where they are, this thing did. That's how we got those Ys. Yeah, that's how it Sven <laughs> thinks that uh, we used markers. Look at this. Look at this. Careful. Careful. Where do you get one of these things, Tim? Rocky Mountain Fly Rocky Shop? Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Do they have them? I think they do. Or at least they can order them, I'm they pretty do. sure they can. So guys, we were really close. <clears throat> the last thing I'm gonna do, and this is an, an aesthetic piece, is I'm gonna take a Sharpie. I'm gonna use green just because I wanna be a little different. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bar these legs. Now, yes, you could tie, you could just you could just tie in barred legs, that's, that's true. But if you don't have the right color, the best thing to do is always have white legs on hand because then you can go in and you can take a Sharpie and bar them whatever color you want them to be. So I leave these legs nice and long so that I can still do this at this point. And then I'm able to trim them to the length that I want. And that's all I'm doing is basically touching that Sharpie. I'm gonna do the back legs and then I'll be done. And then we'll trim them up and that'll be the end of this fly. So super cool fly guys. There's, there's so many different color variations and whatnot. This is a very natural looking one. Um, definitely play around with the colors, play into the hopper scheme, play into the, the stonefly scheme of colors, whatever you want to do. Um, go big, go small, yeah, go big, mic this is micro. Pretty, this, is, this looks big in the screen, but this is actually pretty small. If you have the package at home, you can feel it, you know it's pretty small. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these legs. I like to think of those the, the actual hook length, so not the fly, but the hook length, is the, the length that I'm going to do the front legs. These back legs, I want them to extend to the back of the foam. Trim those out of the back of the foam. And then these ones we already trimmed in the back. Pretty close anyways, but I want them to be the same length as the front. Maybe if I put my camera up here and let everybody know that we're just about to give this away. Ooh, and I, I like cover that. up your nails. Cover up, don't do that. This is, go, this is going out the door here in the next five minutes, folks, so don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere except to grab another beer because the party <laughs> is just, <laughs> just getting, getting started. Going. And the and stone flopper. The stone flopper, guys. You saw it here, first, second, third. Great fly. Fill up your box with them. 
Um, yeah, I can't say enough about these little bugs. Great, great bugs for the mountains when you're doing, this is like a searching pattern. You can, you just really see what they're trying to get honed into. Don't, uh, don't leave home without a few of these in your box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you have it. Really, really good pattern. Especially because if you were to use Flyagra, all that dubbing would soak up the Flyagra and that thing would float for days. Yeah, it really would be. What's Flyagra? Flyagra? Well, that's a floatant. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best, best floatant yeah. that you can... For dry flies. You want, you sure want your other mic? Get, uh, yeah, oof. Bring it back into the softness. Bringing it of, back. I like this. The, so... Yeah, guys, any questions here about have you personally used this fly? The answer is yes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I have. Have you personally caught fish? Yes. Yes. Have you personally caught lots of fish? Yes. More beer. So, yeah, guys, we're just getting <laughs> started. It's 840. We got about another 20 minutes left of hanging out with yeah. you beautiful people here in this fine Episode four, Yellowstone Night. Episode four. You know what's Me. depressing about that though? There's only sixteen left. Sixteen left. They go fast. I know. It seems like we've barely started, yeah. but it's gonna fly, guys. It's gonna be good. Remember, if you haven't bought a kit yet, we still have a few kits left and we really wanna get these gone. Um, and if you buy one on the last episode, that's fine too. Because all forty patterns that come in these kits are going to be uh in that box and they all have quick ties on YouTube so you just go back and tie you don't have to watch the full live stream you just have to enjoy yep I think that's a huge uh, a game upper is a great idea by Dana to do that just based off your guys's feedback but it does create the opportunity for you guys to you know you could buy this in the off season you don't even need to do it um, but it's it's pretty awesome so some questions. Let's hit up some questions here before yeah. we do the final giveaway. Where did, where and when did you come up with the idea for Thursday Night Live? Save uh, one for me. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yoshi Yuki Shabakawa from Japan. What's what? happening? What is up? There? Uh, what time is it in Japan? And are you drinking sake? Yes. That, that's probably so. That, that's what we have over here in the Western world. That yeah, what is it? Sapporo. And, Sapporo. Yeah. It's okay. uh, hey, yeah, Richard, we appreciate... Look, he's in. Save one for me. He's hooked. Yeah. Uh, get a hold of us after the show, and we will let you know how to get a hit, uh, a kit, a hit, <laughs> a hit and a kit. Well, just and, kits. Uh, <laughs> no <laughs> hits hit. here. <laughs> the hits are at tracks. Yeah. The hits are at tracks. So... Answer the question, Matt. Thursday Night Live, how did it start? I always get Tim to tell the story. So if this is season four, if this is halfway, so I don't know, before season one, um, I really felt like there, well, just absolutely case in point with Richard, is that there was a lack of vulnerability in the fly fishing, fly tying world. I felt that I didn't know where to go, where to turn to. I thought there was a lot of posturing. Mm -hmm. And now here we are dressed up and tattooed <laughs> like all for fun. Uh, but I just felt like there was a lot of judgment and posturing in fly fishing. And so I thought, hey, I want to create a space that people can come hang out and tie flies. And there's no judgment. So uh, before season one, I kind of did it for eight or nine episodes. This is like yeah. super bad music here. <laughs> You're doing so good. It, well, it's a playlist, and yeah. it went south. <laughs> it's south. And uh, ball and blues. So anyways, I thought, hey, why not stream it? And then we can uh, reach more people who can't come into the fly shop and tie with us where we started. And then something about it was like, hey, we need to... Go to a brewery, go somewhere where we can drink beer and gather in person. And well, me and Tim kind of met that summer, and um, there's a lot going on with this side of the things. And and tying flies isn't my forte. And I said, Tim, you're great at this. You do this, I'll do this. Let's go to a brewery and just keep it going. So it started kind of there officially at Caravel. Yeah. And then uh, here we are. Because, yeah. COVID. <laughs> because COVID. Because COVID, we're dressed up like a uh, <laughs> it's crazy, TV though, show, if people. There's anything really positive to come out of COVID. You sure keeps dropping the button. Oh, it's because it's getting hot. Oh, yeah. 
Sorry about that, folks. Yeah. It's hot in here. It's hot in your room, too. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it just, it was, I mean, yeah, if there was a positive thing that had come out of COVID, it was just that it created the necessity for people. And Dana talked about having this space that was a vulnerable space, but we, it was, it was on such a small scale. And then all of a sudden, you know, boom, we're getting it to, to meet, greet, and interact with people from around the world, Japan, US, wherever, Europe. Yeah. And now we're able to just have these people come and join us every week. So it, yeah. it's really so just we're just, evolved. Yeah, we're just kind of going with the flow. And uh, Barry says episode 69 because <laughs> I won't say this on because it's Barry's anniversary. <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> but you guys got to know Barry was literally the OG. And in the beginning, there was like two or three people who would tune in and watch the show. And uh, Barry was one of them, and he stuck by our sides the whole entire time, uh, supporting us in kits, and he came to guide school. And so all those things help keep us going when people buy kits, when people buy stickers, when people do fishing trips with us. Uh, it allows us to be here and to hang out with you guys. And uh, Bob, we're super grateful to have you um, have you here kind of new this year. and. And some, some people don't even comment. We don't know they're here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, feel free to, to comment. More than not, reach out to the people in the group because we say it all the time, but there's there's a really cool family atmosphere of the people in the comments. Yeah. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I, I've not met all of you guys, but every person that I've met has been oh, it's feeling weird. With <laughs> what? Anyone else get... Anyone else get? I, I think I went all out with getting the. Uh... Okay, so good question. <laughs> so how many people tune in each week? Do you ever so, finish a statement? Never. <laughs> what was I saying? I don't know, because like, he never finished. <laughs> See, <laughs> so if, there's this one time. If so I then this other if thing. I finished a statement, you would think I'm weird. It's true. Uh, uh, so point. Blake says, how many people tune in each week? So last year I did up all the statistics for the show. And between the 20 episodes plus two, the show reached over 600,000 people. Whew, that's and, a number. Uh, yeah, and so it's like loves yeah. your hair. Oh, my hair? Yeah. yeah. So anyways, uh, it's yeah streamed between here, uh, YouTube, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever else. I also implemented a Discord chat, which I put into the, the comments at Facebook. And uh, if you want to jump into the Discord chat with us, I don't know much about it, but I know that it is a place that we can all uh, just chat. Just kind of keeps us a little tighter if we want. Um, Mm -hmm. We're not fighting algorithms of Facebook or whatnot. So the chat is in there. If you want the link to the Discord, uh, I can share it again or reach out to me, but everyone's welcome. It's not like an exclusive thing. It's, It's literally for everybody. Um, and there's some rooms in Discord where you can show your fly tying rooms. You can show, you can ask fly fishing questions. And so it's kind of organized. And then there's just a general room for people to um, chat and whatever. So, yeah, it's just another avenue mm-hmm. of Thursday Night Live. But truly, guys, honestly, as we talk those numbers or whatever, um, this, like, if you guys don't show up every week and support this and come in here and support each other, uh, we're just a couple of dudes, weird, weird dude, sweating couple weird dudes in the basement. <laughs> uh, when you say it like that, it's not weird dudes. Yeah. But yeah, what I wanted to do, let's get to the giveaway. The final giveaway, uh, courtesy Mr. Blake, Mr. Teague. Blake Teague, this Bose Soundlink Color 2. So I don't know how to do, I got a, I got a fair, I, each and every week I try to do a little better on the production end of things. Which he's crushing. If you've been so, watching since, go back to yeah, season well, one, episode one, and we'll talk about improvement. Yeah. So what we're going to do is go back to... Oh, I can't show that. <laughs> I can't, we'll start at the top. Okay. So I'm going to try doing this screen share here. Oh, it looks like Mr. DeBell. Um Yeah. So just ignore, like, it's just the only way I could do it was with the emails. And this is Mike DeMont. Uh, dressed up as Jimmy. Yeah. He's riding really? a horse. <laughs> and I don't... <laughs> <laughs> so, Your kid's going to um, be so pissed when she wakes up to a broken horse. Oh, can we share enough to get Tim to chug? Oh, man. Uh, Cody, bro. Check. You don't have Where to, to put my phone. 
It's right here. <coughs> so what we want to do for Mr. Mike Dumont, uh, on a scale of one to five, throw up what you think you would give him, five being the best. And uh, did we share enough? Sometimes the sharing is people get mad. We're at 117. If we get to 120 shares, Tim will chuck oh, a beer. Oh, you just keep changing it. Yeah, because it's about the people, Tim. Okay, on a scale of 1 to 5, we got to do this quick. Vote for Mr. Mike Dumont and his rendition of Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barry Dickow. Uh, vote for Mr. Barry Dickow on a scale of 1 to 5. Oh. What do you give Mr. Dickow at Tracks Pub? On episode 69 and his wedding anniversary. <laughs> and he is Lloyd's in town. Look at that stash. Okay. And then we're going to go down to uh, Mr. Michael McKenna. Oh. From the south. South. Uh. Tuning in as I believe he is also Rip. Mr. Rip. Very um, nice. And this is Mike just once in twice. So you guys vote for Mike on a scale of 1 to 10. And sixes are welcome, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> so this is Haley Oliver, uh, who's at Tracks right now. And I think this was a previous uh, costume party, but still, nonetheless, all went all in How here. creepy does that look when you scroll down a photo? <laughs> what? <laughs> nothing. What's uh, happening? Nothing. But there's also another one here. Uh, and, I like uh, that. Nice. Livestock agent. Just... Checking if that's the same guy or Beth just kind of <laughs> that's Beth and not sure. Be Casey. Casey, that's right. Um okay. Well folks, on a scale of one five. Okay. <laughs> she's got no drawers on. Well that's probably true. That's <laughs> uh she's a tracks pub right now, so we're gonna be down at tracks pub in about ten minutes. But what I truly want to introduce you guys before I click on it is actually the winner yeah, you can't. of tonight's. Who is it, uh, though? You haven't told me who this is. Oh, oh, I know who it is. You don't know who this I, is? No, I, I see know who it is. Well, you've probably never seen him looking so fine. Oh, man. Okay, so the winner of tonight's Yellowstone competition and the Bose Soundlink Color 2 donated from mr blake teague this is epic bluetooth speaker uh Bose, one of the best names in sound and what have uh, we got? all right here it is folks here's the winner Here, here's here's the winner mr adrian tebow oh my that's who it is and you think you think at first you think at first it might be rip yeah but then as you scroll down, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you cannot help. Oh, you can't but deny see those legs. Oh my gosh! Well Kay. done. Also, Blake, he might have shaved the beaver for this <laughs> shot. <laughs> uh, oh dang, dude! Adrian, well done. Adrian bought a kit this well year, done. and well, now he's won this, and so he's pretty much just got all his money back. Yeah. Jeez, look at that, hey. Um, so that's kind of how it is. And the music fades as we move on <laughs> and transition scenes. How do you move on? <laughs> my eyes, my eyes. Folks, I think uh, one more time we need to scroll down and see these thighs. <gasps> the great American thighs of Mr. Adrian Tebow. <laughs> I, maybe he passed out. Oh, uh, Maybe. Who knows? I don't see him in here. No. Maybe he's still at the truck stop <laughs> turning tricks. <laughs> you were... You were sweating, the, Tim. As the great Jimmy and would folks, say, you ever have a girl look at you and your whole world just stops? <laughs> well, <laughs> but that's my is. wife, okay? Oh, that is Beth. Your... Beth. Oh, man. This, I, I think you... it's Beth. I think it's Beth. I, I think it's Beth. Oh. It might not be Beth, but... Uh, it's something. That's how it goes. Anyways... You, uh, shave the beaver. Up. How do you? We don't. We're stuck here. I can't no. even press the next button. No, no. Because music. Uh, super, oh, super great. weird things happen. And uh, <laughs> comments are so good. There he is. Oh, there he is, Adrian. Adrian what's up, buddy? Adrian. Congratulations, man. Oddly enough, not the most embarrassing. Well, that's for the internet <laughs> win. <laughs> Bro, wife's Dude. razor is best for life. Oh, so. Man. Like we said at the start of the show, if you showed up tonight and you're brand new, 
There's a reason you showed up tonight. Yeah. And I hope that you didn't leave. Obviously, if you're hearing this, you didn't leave. <laughs> uh, we do appreciate it. <laughs> Is this on your only <laughs> Gosh, Ryan, that's the best thing I've ever heard. Oh, guys, oh, if, if you have a if you have some spare change, uh, make sure you head over to Adrian's <laughs> Only Fins. Only Fins page to support him. <laughs> Blake <laughs> walked in on his wife shaving her butt. All <laughs> <laughs> like, like we said. I hope you're not telling the truth. <laughs> I really hope that's not true. What? What? Oh. Oh my goodness, it's oh, too much. This is where it goes. Uh, this is why this is why we're here because the comments are yeah. super fantastic. That is beyond a fantastic. And to everybody who played with us tonight yeah. and dressed up and uh, just took time out of their Thursday uh, because it's a crazy world and it's busy and there's lots going on and there's lots of things that are craving our attention and our time mm -hmm. and tonight you guys gave us your time and uh i personally am forever grateful for that each and every week uh venmo 50 bucks to adrian <laughs> and you can get into his only fins uh, uh, Jim so Leahy, pretty much yes all right i gotta stop reading comments no we'll never stop <sighs> so it's about a lot of people who were here for the fly time well, pretty much nobody has left yet, so uh, it's a good stuff. Well, anyways, if you are new and you're like, what is this? Uh, this is probably uh, my favorite part of the show, yeah. and it's called What Is Your Win? So what we do here is we just seriously, um, we just seriously share our wins. Uh, you guys share your wins. We'll share our wins. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. And then we're going to head down and uh, visit with our friends at Tracks for a little bit before they all got to take off. Mm -hmm. So, Tim, hit it. Hit What's it. your win of the week? What's my win of the week? Oh, man, lots, lots could be said. But I think I'm going to go with um, my major win of this week was, you know, getting to mend a couple of relationships that have been under some tension for the last week or so um, which was really refreshing uh, some family kind of coming together and figuring a few things out and secondly I would say I'm, I got some time with a, uh, a friend this week to go out and do some ice fishing on a place I've never been before which was a ton of fun get to see some more God's beautiful uh, landscape in our own province which it's hard sometimes you forget that it's right out your back door but until you go and try it you don't know it's there which I know you could speak to as well. So that's uh, but that's my win this week. Got to see some things outdoors. My win yeah. is your segue that you just gave me for for my week. So um, yeah, we've had a bit of a reprieve in the weather here in Alberta, and uh, oh, Bags is at tracks. Bags is at tracks. No way. Oh yeah. Oh, that's I'm what coming, I'm talking buddy. about. Okay, we'll so. Wins of the week are super powerful because I got to share this win this week with one of my, my, mo well, my most favorite person in the entire world. And I had set out to do something, which I talked about on a few episodes ago, about doing something a little different this winter, mostly because winters for me are tough. And I feel that spending so much time in the, win in the summer on the river, I'm outside. And I just didn't quite have a winter activity. And I've been really digging deep into this, trying to figure out why that bothered me so much. And I realized about a month ago that my entire life I played hockey. And that was my winter. Yeah. And so I have nothing to do. I had no extra winter activities because every single year since I can remember, I was playing hockey. I played college. I played professional. So I played hockey. And so this year... Um, I wanted to do something different and I wanted to challenge myself. So I said, Hey, I'm going to start climbing some mountains. So about a month ago, good buddy, Aaron Novlan, who tunes in here quite often. Uh, he took me out to my first, uh, hike to a mountain and, a, a whatever small one, whatever, whatever it is at first, but as a beginning. And so I said to my most favorite person besides Tim, 
Um, <laughs> Always a bridesmaid. I want, I want you to come <laughs> with me and climb some mountains. So she said, okay, well, I'm pretty nervous. So anyways, we got some gear to make a long story short. And uh, I said, let's go. This week looks nice. So let's head out there. And then the trepidation was uh, intense. And the night before, she was quiet. And the drive out there, she was quiet. And when we got there, she was like super nervous. And I could see it in her face that she was she was scared. And I was like, man, what's up? Like, you, you, we can do this. We'll just take as long as we need to get to the top. And if we don't get to the top, we'll turn around and come down. And so it is. Anyways, I took a photo. Uh, hopefully we can... I don't know if we... If you can see this here, mm. but... Anyways, that photo, my friends, is my win of the week. Uh, Janine and I got to the top, and we did it together, and I'm super proud of her. And it's really not showing the photo well. It's trying. There it is. It's better. A couple it's of beautiful dark. faces. Anyways, that's us at the top of the mountain. And that's super fun and powerful, and I'm super proud of her. And, uh, yeah. Now I want to know what your guys' wins are as mm -hmm. we try to track back up here and find bags is that tracks. Yes, that is a fact. My win is getting to spend Thursday nights with you guys. Wishing I could have introduced Braden McFarland to the world of fly fishing. Rest in peace, Braden. Hmm. I'm Mike McKenna. My win was giving a friend his first fly rod and teaching him the basics of casting today. He was super excited. Next, we're off to the river. Wow, that's awesome, nice. dude. Good job, Mike. Mike's retired. <coughs> Rick's win of the week is after 30 years of not building fly rods, he's restarting custom rod building because, oh, because awesome. of COVID and a bad immune system. He's pretty isolated. And yeah. I need trying to think of that also jump somewhere uh hmm. awesome job charlie my win for this week was getting my work truck smashed up bad in a car accident on tuesday and being able to walk away from it and come home to a beautiful wife and two boys hit me hard this morning when my oldest son came running down the stairs super excited to watch tnl tonight that's awesome charlie i mean it was great getting to meet you this summer and your boys um seeing them inspired to you know, to tie and to be part of this TNL family is yeah. uh, super special. And I'm and very glad you're okay. And that's why we share our wins because we're, it's not everything's lickety cool every time, but what's happening is we're learning to reframe our minds and say, Hey, something good's coming out of this. And well, that's exactly what Charlie did. Mm -hmm. Cole says, uh, my win is I listened to an awesome podcast by Randy Newberg about family with a pretty great guest. I got to see some awesome photos of a friend getting outside and climbing a mountain. These smiles are infectious and brighten my week. <laughs> and that's super unselfish of Cole is that yeah. his wins were other people's wins. Yeah. And that's the OQP that resides. Yeah. Only quality people. Yes. That photo <laughs> also makes me smile. Thanks, Matt. All right. Janine, yeah, Janine, climbing my first mountain with you yesterday. <laughs> We're not walking so <laughs> great today. <laughs> she may have told me there's muscles she never knew she had that <laughs> yes, she feels today. I, that's, that's a okay. fact. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Tom. Brandy, my win is keeping two boys happy during isolation and without putting anyone else at harm. Saying F the rules in their entirety. <laughs> uh, amen. <laughs> Boom. Amen. Put up the streamers. Ryan, my win is Skagit Nymphian for some Bow River bullets. <laughs> yes. Skagit. Skagit. Pretty pumped to get out on the two-hander and be in the water. -ish. That's awesome, Ryan. Troy. My win is always spending the night with you guys. Love Thursday Night Lives. Thanks, Troy. Appreciate that, Troy. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, the win is Nolan. I'm so blessed for his smiles, and I get to be his dad. Heck yeah, dude. Yes. And I'm grateful every time I get a picture of Nolan with a giant smile. <laughs> yeah. That brightens up my day. This night, night is, is the, the win. win. Mr. Sean, his win of the week is getting some extra time with the fam and some extra time at the fly table. Four out of four for COVID, but, but all are almost over it and just feel just fine. That's awesome, Sean. I'm glad you're doing okay, buddy. This one's all you. Win was having friends over for TNL in the living room and people who have never even fly fished tied flies. Oh, that's so cool. Now saying they want to join every week. Oh, that's awesome, Joel. 
Wouldn't be a good lawyer if I didn't offer services to a fellow fly fisherman. Hit me up if you need anything at all. Cheers. Uh -huh. Thanks, John. That's awesome. John, man. you're in Edmonton, I believe, right? Nice. Maybe something we say on the show, we're going to need you. <laughs> yeah, one day. Appreciate that, John. That's Thanks, awesome. John. Steve, my wind will be getting out on the Bow River this weekend. Why does something sound a little different here? Maybe yeah. Turn down the voice. <laughs> Chuck some flies. Oh, two can one tonight. <laughs> awesome. So he doesn't. It's not basketball. No, I know. Took a rask. Back with the Bruins. Nice. Mr. Barry, our win for the week. My son walking away from, walking away with bruises from a major auto accident. Someone was watching over him. Amen. That was Charlie we spoke about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think this is uh, Mr. Pipke. My mm -hmm. win is getting a call from a longtime friend who needed a sounding board to get through something. Felt good to know that we can help others by just being there through it all. Thanks again, TNL, for an another highlight to look forward to. Yeah. You're welcome. Mr. Cam, be good. Be good to each other. Be happy for others' wins and love that others have their best days too. We love you all. Love you too, buddy. Ken solo laps on the snowboard at Castle. Oh, nice. Mr. Craig Jones, win for the week. Get to start teaching how to tie flies with my students in class on Monday. That is a win, dude. Awesome. Richard, when is his 40-year-old son called to say he passed on career advice to one of his young workers that he passed on career advice? Well, that's it's everything you could want is when your kids take your advice to pass <laughs> on to others. And Richard, we're grateful that you're here. Welcome yeah, to welcome. the TNL fam. You're kind of hooked and stuck now. Huh? <laughs> we you got can't you. leave. We won't let you. <laughs> <laughs> How was the Kool-Aid? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Beatty, no big wins, just winning a little every day and keep moving forward. Hey, man, dude. That's it's like climbing the mountain. Like, you just one, one foot in front of the other. One step Sometimes at a time. it's just head down, and you really don't want to look too far ahead because you're like, wow, i got to climb that. And that's Roger's idea this week. It's just yeah. a little bit, a little win, and keep moving forward. Yep. How are we fishing down here? Well, we don't live in the polar Arctic <laughs> North. Your scissors are it's, on the way. It's time to move, Sean. Yeah. We'll bring the jerky. Because of Jim James William Crawford, he gave his kit uh, for this week to Richard to join in for the first time tonight. Um, so there we go again. People doing things for other people, and their wins are their wins. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Brent Struthers, my win this week is being able to fulfill and ask for my kids to get them into fly fishing um, by booking a couple of float trips with Dana and Tim. Now only 540 sleeps to go. Yeah, uh, That's awesome, Brent. We're really looking excited. forward to getting you and your kids out on the water, man. <laughs> I can't notice your shirt is so undone, Tim. What? <laughs> it's not even to the belly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm concerned because I think Brent, bo Brent booked in July and he's got 540 more sleeps. <laughs> Is, is he counting naps in there, oh, or man. what's happening? Clint, my win is having my daughter home from university a bit longer and a chance to spend time together before she heads back to Nova <clears throat> Scotia. Nice. Yes. Laura, she looks like she got some flowers at work from a coworker. It was nice to be recognized. It is nice to be recognized once in a while, even the small things. Absolutely. It's awesome. Mr. Fisher, <clears throat> getting to get up to Olds and check Dana Lottery's plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope you bring your plumber's butt. Uh, bring the snake. <laughs> yeah, I got it here. You just you just bring your plumber's bum. Uh, uh, Justin, grateful that he's making the trip up here, yeah. which is a long ways away, uh, to help us out with our hot water tank. And uh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Ryan, a couple more here, folks, and then we're heading down to tracks. Yeah, yeah. My outdoor ed teacher did this when I was in grade nine. It was the coolest class I ever had. Still remember it today. Oh. You stuff the sticks with you. Tim, did you chug? We hit the 120. I'll, I'll chug with you. I just opened this. Okay. <laughs> like right now, right now? Well, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, Caitlin signed up with the Dream Mentorship Program. I'll add that again. And the next chapter is starting in my life. Exploration and creativity on the horizon. The dream job is beginning. So grateful I didn't give up. I got to see Kayla on this week. Give her some of her winnings. And that's super cool that you're making things happen. The shares are at enough. Okay, so I just opened this. 
I just want to preface this with this is pretty cold. I just took it out of the fridge, so I might struggle a bit. Well, let's try. Let's Ready, try. folks? All right, let's do it. Bottoms up, guys. <clears throat> Tim's an easy day. There's no way you just opened that. Ah. All right, folks. Ugh. I'm not good at this. That's how you do it. Your microphone is way too much of the screen, Tim. It's annoying me. <laughs> you, need, you need to get some microphone etiquette there. Sorry, I'll move over here and lose some mic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to get back to Tim, this. don't be a beaver because Blake's... I can't even say it. Blake's wife will shave you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we can't do this anymore. Uh, anyways, oh. we love you guys. This has been too much. Oh. Adrian, congrats on the uh, Yellowstone costume winner. Uh, Scott, who's in bed, make sure you send me an email so we can get this out to you. For everybody else who joined us tonight, we are grateful for you. We cannot wait to see you guys next week. Next week. On Thursday. <clears throat> where we'll be tying. Yeah, what are we tying this week, next week? The Sulphur Emerger. Ooh, I like that one. And the Ken Lockwood Streamer. Ooh, Ken Lockwood, a classic. Classic. From mm -hmm. the depths of the Lake Fisherman. The Lake Fisherman. All right, everybody, have a great week. Tracks, yeah. we're coming for you guys. Coming for you guys. We'll be there in about 10 minutes. Janine, start the car, get your makeup on. <laughs> we don't have time start to wait. Start the car. Start the car. Start the car. Yeah, we love you guys. Love Can't you wait guys. to see you next week. Absolutely. Appreciate it. I can feel my body cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Looks can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can't take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can't take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me Back up and get me home.